Hi there, welcome to my channel. My name is Sandra and you're watching The Schwoven's Nest. My first project is this little watering can that I picked up at the thrift store. It's a resin type, which is a really hard, hard plastic, but it has some really neat carvings in it and the color was okay, but I wanted to just brighten it up a bit. I'm using some folk art home decor clear wax and I just put a little drop of white chalk paint in it. I'm going to put this all over the watering can and then I'm just going to wipe it off using a paper towel and all of the white color is going to stay inside of those cracks and it turns out really pretty. Some of my favorite florals to use are Sola wood flowers. I'll have a link for them down in my description box but they are absolutely beautiful and what I love about it is that you can dye them whatever color you want. I took some orange paint, added a little bit of white and some water, and I've created this beautiful peachy color that I think is going to be so pretty against the natural color of the other flowers. I'm using some bits of green pool noodle that I had left over and I just wedged it down into the bottom of the watering can because it was tight enough that it's not going to move. I'm going to be keeping these little flowers on the bamboo skewers because that's going to make it so much easier for me to push that into the styrofoam. I wanted to create somewhat of a symmetrical round or half round on the top of this watering can almost to make it look like a bouquet of flowers. What I do to the end of the bamboo skewers is use my snips and I cut them off onto an angle so they have a bit of a point which is a little bit easier to push into the styrofoam. I also used one of these piercing tools from the Dollar Tree to poke a little bit of a starter hole into the foam, which made it much easier to push those flowers in. I've got all the flowers in there that I want and now I'm taking these tiny little sprigs of greenery and I'm going to hot glue them in between all of the flowers. I just want a little bit of greenery peeking out in between each of them. So wherever there is a joint where two flowers meet or where three flowers meet, that's where I'm going to be putting the greenery. And this just helps to bring it all to life. I thought about adding a ribbon bow to this, but then I changed my mind. I love it the way it is. I'd like to take a quick second and thank all of my viewers and subscribers. I wouldn't be where I'm at today on YouTube without your support so I truly appreciate each and every one of you. If you're new to my channel and you like what you see I would love it if you could hit that red button too. This project is using one of these Dollar Tree bamboo cutting boards. They're the little ones that you can get. I put some walnut stain on it and now I'm just wiping off the excess. I've got a tongue twister for you. Say pretty pink peony from Pixabay a couple of times. I had to repeat that quite a few times before I got it right when I was editing this video. I'm going to also take the makeup sponge that had some of the dark walnut stain and just go around the edges of the oval as you see here. Unfortunately, I didn't have any footage for that, so I do apologize. Now I'm going to just place it on this other piece of cardstock paper, which is some scrapbooking paper that came from a paper pack. And I'm gonna figure out where I want it to be and then I'll just cut out a square. Then I'm going to tear the edges because I want this to look old and ripped and vintage and worn off. So I'm just placing it on the cutting board every once in a while to make sure that I get the right size. I thought the color of the cutting board was nice, but I found that it was just a little too solid. And for this to look old and vintage, it needed to have a little bit of distressing on it. So I'm taking my favorite beige gray color called mushroom and just doing some dry brushing just around the edges where the wood is going to peek out from underneath the flower. 
using the same makeup brush that has a little bit of the stain left over, I'm going back over around the edges just to kind of darken them up a little bit and again, make it even a little bit more distressed. I'm just using a glue stick on the back of the scrapbook paper and I'll place it and center it right onto the board. I'm just going to smooth it out and make sure that it's adhered really well. One thing that I don't have in my craft tool supply kit is a little brayer and I think I'm going to get one just to make it easier to push paper down onto things and glue them without having to use my fingers and perhaps maybe then mucking up any paint that I have on my project. I decided to add a little bit of a metal accent to this sign. So I'm just going to be adding this silver key. Now I don't like the silver look of it. So I decided just to take a little bit more of that walnut gel stain and go over it once I have it glued in place and just give it a little bit more of a tarnished look. Since I've learned how to make a little two finger bow, I'm having a lot of fun adding different types of bows to my projects. I took a little bit of thin burlap ribbon and some white cotton ribbon and made a two finger bow. And I'm just going to glue that to the top of my flower sign. And I think this just adds a really cute shabby chic effect. To make this sign a freestanding sign, I wanted to add some of these larger tumbling tower blocks. And these are actually from a game that I picked up at the thrift store. I'm going to glue one like this and then put another one right on top of it. And then to finish this off so it looks really nice, I'm going to just stain the back of the board and these blocks as well. I wanted it to look more complete and finished and I think it turned out absolutely gorgeous. I have seen tons of other crafters use these dot stickers as half beads on wood projects and my Dollar Tree finally got some in so I was so excited to grab them and use them for this riser. So I'm just going to go ahead and stick the dots all the way around this wood plank that I have. It's about eight inches round and the dots fit on it just perfectly. This little terracotta pot also came from the Dollar Tree. It was two in a pack for $1.25. And I think this is the three inch size. I'm going to put some of the dots all around the bottom rim or the top rim of the pot. Now the sticky part on the back of these dots isn't the best. They're meant more for paper projects. So I'm going to take some Mod Podge and just go all the way around and seal them in. This really made a huge difference for how sturdy they were sticking onto this wood. I've seen people use I think you could also use other types of glue, even some hot glue. I just didn't want to take the time to have to try and get the hot glue onto the dot or onto the board. And then it was just going to be too much work. So I just thought this would be an easier way and it worked out really well. I'm going to mark out the center of the round just so I make sure that I put the glue in the right spot. I'm usually an eyeballer and you can see me, this is what I'm doing, I'm just eyeballing it. And then I'm just gonna put a dot right in the center of the hole there from the terracotta pot and then draw a line on the outside of the pot so I know where to put the glue. I want this project to have a permanent hold, so I'm using my favorite weld bond glue that glues anything together in a welded fashion. It's a super excellent glue. It sort of has the consistency of construction glue, and I like to spread it out with my finger a little bit because that just gives it a little bit more tackiness and grip you can usually start to use your projects or continue your projects after about 15 minutes of it holding in place. I've got a link for that down in my description box too. And the large bottle only cost me around $11 and I've had it for over a year. It goes a really long way. For the terracotta pot, I'm using white chalk paint and I'm gonna give it a couple of coats because the terracotta really soaks up the paint. 
you have to go over it at least a couple of times if you want some good coverage. I'm also going to go over the beads on the round portion, but I'm not going to do the top or the bottom of the round wood. I want that to stay natural. To get the top part of this riser a little bit more dimension, I'm just using some black wax on a paper towel and just dabbing it very slightly onto the wood and then rubbing it in. I just want to accentuate all of that wood grain and not really change the color too much. I'm going to do this to the bottom of the wood round as well. I used some clear wax and a little drop of burnt umber acrylic paint to create a ceiling glaze for the top of this riser. I'm going to use the same mixture and go over the beads and the terracotta pot and the beads on the pot. I want this to have a little bit of an aged look, sort of an antiqued look, without actually adding too much of the brown into it so I would have to wipe it off. So this way I'm just applying it and letting it dry and getting a little bit more into the cracks and crevices and then putting some on the terracotta pot as well. I am definitely keeping this one because I love how it turned out. I hope you enjoyed these projects today and got some inspiration to create a little shabby farmhouse decor for your home. And if you liked this one, here's a couple more you might enjoy. Thanks so much for watching. See you in the next one.